So now that we've gained an understanding of the scope of the lecture today on conservation biology, we're going to be further understanding the idea of biodiversity in the next couple of flowcharts. So we'll entitle this next flowchart Biodiversity 1, and it's going to be devoted to understanding what diversity on Earth really classifies as and consists of, and also why we as humans should really care about conserving this diversity on Earth. Now, when we think of biodiversity, we usually split it up into three basic levels, let's say, of diversity. And those levels are as follows. Usually there's a genetic level of biodiversity that we study as a conservation biologist, let's say, and genetic levels of diversity are going to be defined as variation, and that's the idea of diversity, the word variation, within and between populations, within and between populations. So we're going to write within and between populations is the key here. So we have variation, thus diversity, and it's at the genetic level. We also are going to have another level of diversity that's going to be at the species level. And this level of diversity is a bit more broad and it's also a bit more encompassing with the characteristics necessary to define it as a level of diversity. We can broadly define it as, again, variation, of course, because that's what diversity is. It's variation. But this variation is going to be of species, many species, so double P here, in a uh, designated, let's say, ecosystem and also possibly the biosphere in question. So now we are much broader in our understanding than just the genetic level of diversity. We are now looking at an ecosystem and a biosphere and many different species all contributing to biodiversity on Earth. In terms of species and the biodiversity, the variation that we see, we can understand the scope of conservation biology by looking at two types of species that are of great importance. First and foremost, there's this idea of an endangered species. This is something we've heard many times over, and of course this is just going to be endangered SP because we're only talking about one specific endangered species. But we're just going to make sure we understand that this definition is going to give us what, we under what it really means to be endangered. An endangered species is any species in danger, two separate words there, in danger of extinction in its range. Extinction in its uh, designated range. And that's just basically the place that it lives and the place that we t uh, technically expect to see it roaming. So if it's in danger of ex extinction, it is endangered. And then we can also classify species as something less of an endangerment, let's say, and uh, we'll call this one threatened species. So we can also have a threatened species. So a threatened species will be one that is likely to become endangered. That's all likely to become endangered. So now that we have those two things set up, we can now continue our discussion on species diversity. In terms of extinction patterns, we have to look at the species level of diversity through two different scopes, let's say. And I'm going to do this over here, on this side here, because we need a little bit of room. So in terms of extinction patterns and the biodiversity that we see at the species level, we can have two types of extinction. We can have a local extinction, which I'll do right over here. And a local extinction will be when a species is lost in one particular area. So we'll say lost in one particular area. And that's the definition of an extinction. A species is lost. But we're saying it's a local extinction because it's in one particular area. And I'm also going to show you that extinctions can happen at the global scale, at the global level. Obviously a bit more drastic, a lot more draft, drastic in fact, than the local extinctions. At the local level, the species is now lost from all organisms, or, or from all ecosystems, excuse me. Species now lost from all, this is very drastic indeed, all ecosystems. So it is no longer 
on the biosphere, on the Earth. It is no longer part of the biodiversity that we see. So as you can see, when you look at species level of biodiversity, we have many different components, especially in the conservation biology realm. Our job as conservation biologists are to identify endangered species, identify threatened species, and prevent these local and global extinction patterns that we see. Uh, one final level of biodiversity that we see is the ecosystem level of biodiversity. At the ecosystem level of diversity, this is when we have, again, variation. Variation is key here. We always define it as variation, variation, variation. It always shows up in this diversity concept because that's what diversity is. If this is going to be variation in a much broader sense. Uh, it's going to be in the biospheres that we study. So we'll say in biospheres, um, and it's also going to be in ecosystems themselves. So that's a much broader look at the variation, but still a look at diversity in and of itself. Now, in terms of all of this, I think one of the most important questions to ask anytime you're studying biology, and one of the first times, the first time actually we're doing this in a flow chart, is to explicitly ask yourself, why should we as humans even care? This is something that I always ask myself whenever I'm studying biology, and it really puts a nice scope to the lesson, to what's trying to be taught, what the importance of the idea is. Now, there are several reasons why we should care. One of them is a, a bit of a moral justifi justification, I would call it, and it's termed biophila. So phil meaning to love, and then bio is life, right? So this is going to just be defined as a sense of connection to nature and life, and all of its life. Sense of connection to nature and all life. To nature plus all life. So this is just a basic moral justification that we, uh, many humans at least, have. We like to see other living things. We appreciate other living things, and thus we are caring because of our biophilic nature, let's say. In addition, we should also care because the biodiversity on Earth gives us very important products that literally define and make our lives as simple and as, as easy as they are, so long as we have those products, of course. What products am I talking about? Things like medicines. Medicines are a direct result of the biodiversity on Earth. Specifically, a good example about medicines is that about 25% of all pharmaceutical medications come from plants. And that clearly means that biodiversity of plants plays a big role in the products that we consume as humans. Speaking of plants, foods. All foods have a really intimate connection to the biodiversity on Earth. And without that biodiversity, we lose the ability to have these foods and also fibers. When we think of fibers, we're not talking of, you know, the idea of eating a lot of fiber. Here we're actually meaning like textiles, things like cotton, cloves, polyester, all of those things are created by man, yet they come initially from this nature and connection to life. And so it's important to recognize that products themselves are a result of the biodiversity on Earth. In addition, we also are going to have the idea of genetic resources. Genetic resources are simply going to be uh, directly related to the idea of crop variation. We can manipulate crops in order to vary them. And the crops themselves, this goes in hand, uh, hand in hand with the food idea, will provide us with, of course, food. And this genetic resource, let's say, of manipulating crops is an important idea that we as humans display on planet Earth in regards to the biodiversity, of course. And finally, the last reason why we should care, obviously not the only last reason, many reasons we should care, but a very important reason we should care are because of ecosystem, let me rewrite that, because of ecosystem services. This is very, very important, very, very underlooked. So what are ecosystem services and why are they important? Ecosystem services are all process through which natural systems, all processes through which natural let's write this down through which natural 
Systems help sustain life. Systems help sustain. This is going to be a key word throughout this lecture, sustain life. Let's look at some examples of this. What are some ecosystem services that we absolutely need on planet Earth? Well, things like air and water purification, those are the direct results of biogeochemical cycles, right? And uh, weather patterns that we observed in our ecosystem ecology le lecture. Air and water purification are services provided to us by the ecosystem to help sustain our own lives. Waste decomposition is also important. When you have a good working, let's say, trophic system and trophic levels, you have efficient waste decomposition by the bacteria, by the detritivores that consume this waste, and thus that is a way to sustain and continue life as a process. In addition, we can also reduce a strong weather impact, let's say, so long as, let's write this down, reduce strong weather impacts so long as everything is okay. If we are not messing with the biodiversity on Earth, if we have strong weather, like a hurricane or a tornado of some sort, we can reduce its impact by ensuring that there is a large amount of diversity on Earth. In addition, crop pollination is a key, key idea here because without crop pollina pollination, again, we lose this idea of food. This is a natural process that helps sustain our lives. And most importantly, about all of these ecosystem services, and I'm going to write this over here since I ran out of room, is that they actually have no real, true monetary value. There's no way to put a monetary value on them. And this is the direct reason we as humans, uh, really, uh, sadly so, undervalue. We absolutely undervalue all of the ecosystem services that we are provided, that we are provided without asking, that just happen. And when we manipulate the biodiversity, when we manipulate these levels of diversity, we really start to see the value. That's only when we see the value of these ecosystem services.